as you board, please move across your car to make room for everyone and kindly offer available seating to those needing special assistance. If you're standing, please hold on to the handrails and stay clear of the doors. They will be closing in a moment. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of Disney Assembled. I'm Troy. And I'm Mimi. And we are your happy little father-daughter Disney podcast, here to create joy and share our love for all things Disney. Disney Assembled is sponsored by our patrons over on Patreon, Brenda, Danny, Connie, and Andrew. Yes, thank you guys so very much. You can join them also and become part of our Patreon member family. Go to our website, DisneyAssembled.com, click on the Become a Patron button, Membership starts as little as $2 a month. You get access to all the exclusive member benefits and shows and extra content and all that good stuff there. So please consider that. We'd really appreciate it. If a membership is not your thing, no big deal. Just tell your friends about the show. Continue to listen. And if you haven't done so already, please consider leaving us a very kind rating and review on your podcast player of choice, especially Apple Podcasts. Most of our listens come from Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't written a really nice review and given us that five-star rating, uh, we'd really uh, appreciate that. So thank you. Of course, if you're looking for additional Disney magic to bring into your life, specifically Disney music, you can head over to Magic of the Mouse Radio. Magic of the Mouse Radio is the best place online for all your Disney magic and music. You can listen to our show every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And yeah, Disney Assembled, we are a proud member of the Magic of the Mouse Radio family. In addition to being a part of the Magic of the Mouse radio family, I'm very proud to be part of the Magic of the Mouse news family. Magicofthemousenews.com has articles for anything and everything Disney related that you might want to know. So make sure to check it out. Disney, no. <laughs> Magicofthemousenews.com. Yeah, thank you very much. That's good stuff. I was actually looking at a couple of the articles you've written in the past recently. Good job. Good stuff. Especially Thanks. with the music stuff. You've done a lot of research into that and, and good reads. All right. Yeah. We're actually recording this episode quite early than earlier than usual. Uh, I know we just recorded uh, episode 172, 173, the one that came out last week. You weren't feeling too well. Um, you're still a little bit under the weather. Well, okay. Today is June 2nd. We recorded last week, at the time of you listening, last week's episode yesterday. On June 1st. And we're recording a week in advance today. Yes. So I'm feeling better, but still not great. Yep. Um, and so you can definitely hear it in my voice. And we're, we're, we, words are escaping me. We are recording early because you have some exciting movement that you're going to be making. You're going to be out of pocket for a while, right? Going yep. on big college tours and looking at colleges for after next year of high school. And so you're going to be gone for a while. And so yep. we have to record this in advance. So yeah, my mom and I are going to be gone for a week and then I'm going to be home for like a month and then I'm going to be gone for like. The entire second half of July. Uh oh, we're gonna have to get those guests that wanted to be on the show, maybe record in advance so we can get those episodes in. Yeah, because you're gonna be going doing your camp counseling and all that good well, stuff. I'm going, yeah. on, I'm going on a vacation with my with my friends. Sure, you're doing that for and a week, and then I'm going to two weeks of camp back to back to work. Yeah, good so stuff. very good excited. Stuff. It's gonna be a great summer. It is gonna be a great summer, and I am excited for you about all those great stuff coming up. So last week's episode, we began a series where we sort of assembled one of the lands of a Disney park. We assembled Adventureland last week. And this week, we're going to assemble Tomorrowland. So yes, we're going to take a step into tomorrow. We're going to look to the future. We're going to dive deep into assembling Tomorrowland. Sounds like fun, right? Yeah. Right, you know what else is fun? I don't know. The Disney a dad joke of the week. <laughs> Every week, it's the funnest part. Are you ready for it? Yeah. All right, guys, let's jump into this week's Disney dad joke of the week. Oh, boy. Mimi. What? Spaceship Earth. What about it? It did you? It, it is my favorite attraction at Epcot. It just means the world to me. Okay. 
get okay. it. Spaceship Earth. Yes. Means the world to me. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Still no one submitting a Disney Dad Joke of the Week for consideration. Guys, if you have one that you'd like us to consider using for the show, if it's appropriate, and if we have not used it already, email us, disneyassembled at gmail.com, or send us one of those messages on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok, all at Disney Assembled. Heck right. yeah. My little cat is laying in the sun right now, and she's so cute. She's being warmed by the sun. She lays in that little sunspot every day until it goes away. Yep. And then she goes back into my room. Yeah. And the other one is currently hiding behind a pile of stuff in this room. A pile of stuff. Heck yeah. Disney I can see his little like, paws poking out. The Disney Assembled headquarters pile of stuff. The official pile of stuff of Disney Assembled. Yeah. All right. You ready to assemble Tomorrowland? Yes. All right. We're gonna so if th- you missed last week, basically what we did was we went through like tips for the land, like how you know how to tackle it appropriately must do's day versus night like what time of day to go um and then we sort of like ranked the rides in comparison so it's california yep. and florida right. so yeah we're gonna do that we, i don't know just a general sort of overview as to what it is and how we like to handle it yeah we're gonna do a deeper dive than usual usually we just kind of superficially gloss over stuff we're gonna we're gonna assemble this tomorrowland thing and if you're going to a disney park soon Perhaps this episode will help you enjoy your Tomorrowland visit even more. All right. Yes. So last week we started, I asked you to just describe Tomorrowland in your own words. And I think that's a good place for us to start. Can you, in your words. You asked words, me to describe Adventureland. I mean, sorry, Adventureland last week. Okay. Can you, so this week, Tomorrowland. Can you describe in your own words, in a couple of sentences, how would you describe Tomorrowland? Tomorrowland is a futuristic like science fiction beep boop zip zorp land um <laughs> it's it's very much it's very much like i don't really know how to, it, i want to say it's more science fiction than it's anything else because of the beep boops and the zip zorps it's not in it's not progressive as much as it is like futuristic uh rocket ship space stuff like that yep. um it's kind of hard to describe because it's all over the place with its theming i think because sometimes it's like tomorrow in the future but then it's like space but also when you have to consider the 50s and 60s the the sure. new frontier or the final frontier of space space was being equated with right the future right i took a push i probably got a four on that exam i know all about the 50s and 60s in the post-war movements a Boom. push for those who don't know is ap us history ap us history right anyway but yeah it's very it's very Beep boop zip zip door. That's how I would describe yeah, so it. So it's kind of a it's kind of an oxymoron. I think is the term. You're the English major here. Oxymoron. It's it's sort of a retro future, which is well, kind of an oxymoron, right? Kind of like jumbo shrimp and yeah. a retro future view of the future. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's the future, kind of seen in a retro view right. because nothing in Tomorrowland is really so advanced that it's futuristic it's futuristic for what people in the 70s thought the future was going to be in the 50s and the 60s because tomorrowland opened in disneyland in 1955 right and so yeah so it's sort of that retro futuristic sci-fi yeah sort of vibe right so if you people my age would watch like the jetsons and stuff like that it's very jetsons it's very very back to the future like yeah the cubs won this no, I was going to say Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll say the Cubs won the Super Bowl. The Cubs won the... They did win the World Series, Super World eventually. Series. I yeah. know baseball. I actually do know baseball. I just had a brain moment there. I told you guys I'm not feeling that great. That's all right. All right so um, we've described Tomorrowland pretty well, I think, to give people an idea yeah. of what, what, what it is. Uh, and they can also go online and look at pictures of it, I suppose. Um, but tips. So if you had to give like one or two of your big Mimi tips for really enjoying Tomorrowland, what would some of your tips be? Hmm. Okay. In Florida, um, stay as far away from that red rocket ship water cooler self down thing as far away as you possibly can. Um, just avoid that. It will probably give you some disease from the Middle it's Ages. It's not going to give you any diseases. It's going to give you the Come bubonic on. plague. Don't go anywhere near it. You're just being silly. Um, don't skip People Mover ever. Don't do it. Also, don't skip the Astro Orbiter because even if you hate it, you can just ride it like on its lowest setting. Um, I think there's not too much to say for me about Tomorrowland because part of what I love about Tomorrowland and what makes it my favorite land in Magic Kingdom, is, is specifically in Florida, is the fact that it's very, very like 
accessible, very user friendly from what I understand. Um, everything's laid out nicely. There's no can, pretty consistently. It's hard for a crowd to get jumbled up in one space like they, like they might do in Adventureland or, front, or Fantasyland. Um, but I think waiting one tips. So like in order to <laughs> wait for Space Mountain, it's always worth it. Don't skip the people mover. Don't skip Astro Orbiter. My tips would be, uh, even though when it rains really hard, the water does seem to pool up around the, the quick service area mm-hmm. in the middle of Tomorrowland. But I would say that because Tomorrowland has a number of attractions that are all indoor attractions, and we'll go over what they are, especially in Florida is what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. It's really a good land to go to when it's raining because there are some things you can do indoors there For that sure, yeah. are a good place. We've talked about that before. I think in a previous episode, we talked about places to be in the rain. Um, and yeah, I think your tip on people mover is a good one. We'll talk more about day or night, but I certainly think one of my big tips is if you get an opportunity to, if you can time riding the people mover during the fireworks show, um, it is a magical moment if you get good views there. So those are my tips for Tomorrowland. Don't rush through it. It's, it's, yeah. And, 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 you know, the, the, the music in Tomorrowland, sort of the area music, the environmental music is really cool. Yeah. So, I would say yeah. like in Tomorrowland specifically in both California and in Florida, that that is the park to take in the most ambiance. Right. Um, so just take it all in there. Sure. So do we want to jump into the day and night discussion now, or do you want to save that till after we've talked about um, the attractions? I think we should jump in and then we can go into let's the attractions. Do, let's, that's a great idea. Let's do that. So in last week's episode, we talked about adventure land is, do you think it's a better land to go to during the day or in the evening? And of course this is all subjective. And of course, Disney world and Disneyland are great both at night and during the day, but speaking specifically about Tomorrowland, do you find it to be more enchanting, more magical during the day when the sun is out or in the evening when the sun goes down? Um, in the evening. Um, I think, so I think consistently like a big trend is that at night, the Disney parks are so beautiful and it's so great to be in them at night. But I think specifically with Tomorrowland, um, because of that like spacey thing they've got going on there, it just lends itself very well to operating at night under the stars. And I just... It's it's kind of like an inexpli- inexplicable feeling that I get when I'm into when I walk off of a ride. Um, if I walk off of space or off of yeah off of space or off of Buzz Lightyear and it's just dark outside and everything is like illuminated so nicely with like blues and greens and whites and it's just it's very it's a very different vibe from last week's Adventureland for sure. Um, but I think Tomorrowland at night is the better way to do it. I would arguably say doing it during the day is not, you're not going to get the same like experience. I find it more frustrating during the day because it is packed during the day. So like kind of going on a tangent here, um, Buzz Light, your Space Ranger spin in Florida, and I guess in California, it's going to draw a bunch of little kids, tons of families. Space Mountain is a huge draw in both parks. Um, in California, the Star Wars stuff makes it even worse. Um, but like that, that alone, those two attractions alone, like bring in enormous crowds that thin out dramatically as the evening goes on. Because like, because <laughs> kind of like what you said, because the queues and because the rides are indoors, people are more willing to wait for Space Mountain during the day because once they get inside, they're in the AC, right? And then people are going to jump over to um, Big Thunder, Mine Train, rides like that. Um like at night when the crowds are thinned. So it's, it's very, it's frustrating to be in Tomorrowland during the day because the crowd is awful. So if nothing else, if, even if it was ugly to look at at night, it's more manageable at night. So be in Tomorrowland in the evening. Right. I, I think in Florida, Tomorrowland is a a better experience in, in the evening because of the people mover and just, I think the vibe in the evening is really cool. Astro Orbiter in the evening is really cool. In Disneyland in California, I think during the day is probably best. When you look at the land, and we'll go over the attractions at each of those parks here in just a minute. But when you look at the number of attractions at Disneyland as opposed to Disney World, the ones at Disneyland don't really lend itself 
any for any special reason in the evening. And so uh, I would tend to say Disneyland is probably more enchanting in the e- in the morning, in the afternoon, and during the day. <laughs> Disney World in Florida, I'm going to go with the evening as well. I think it's really great. It's one of my favorite places to be in the evening, which is really a shame because I love being in Adventureland in the evening. And so because they're on opposite ends of the park in Florida, I am frequently putting in plenty of mileage going from one side to the next after the sun goes down. Oh, yeah. Let's go through. Um, do you want to talk about characters in Disneyland's Tomorrowland? I think, or Disney can, World's I think Tomorrowland? we can touch on it briefly. In Florida, you can find... I mean, Stitch and Buzz Lightyear. Stitch and Buzz have been and that's coming about out. It. Yeah. On the stage. That's all we've seen out there. And I know right. for special events, they may bring like some special characters out, but just on a daily basis. Uh, yeah, that that's typically what you see. I, I don't recall in Disneyland. I'm guessing Buzz is probably in Disneyland as well. Yeah. Um, I would assume they're both there. And then plus maybe Star Wars because Star Tours is still there. But also with Galaxy's Edge, it's like different now. Right. Obviously. So character wise, mo- mostly Buzz Lightyear and Stitch for the most part, if you look yeah. for characters. All right. Let's talk about the attractions. Let's go to Disneyland in California first. We're going to, I'm going to list all the attractions that are in Disneyland in California, and then maybe we can rank them, right? According to our okay. preference, like we did last week. All right. So here are the rides, the attraction. These are ride attractions mostly. Uh, you have Space Mountain. Buzz Lightyear, Astro Blasters, Star Tours, Autopia, the Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> that and, is so awful. And the Astro Orbiter. All right. So we have six attractions in Disneyland, California. From least enchanting to most enchanting, how would you rank them? Um, I'd put Finding Nemo on the bottom. I'm shocked. Not only is that I'm ride absolutely shocked. Not only is that ride terrible. Um, he okay. said sarcastically. It's honestly like it's a cute concept. I just can't handle being trapped underwater with like screaming children. Fair enough. And then I would go Autopia because although like you can't go wrong with a cute little go kart ride, they're loud. It kills the magic for me. Um, Astro Blasters, not Astro Blasters. Astro Orbiter. Sorry. Um, yeah, Dumbo, but different theme. And then I would go. Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters because it's, you know, it's a game. It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. It's infuriating, but it's a game. It's fun. Fine. Star Tours. Love Star Tours. Can't go wrong with it. I am a Star Tours defender till the end of my days. And then Space Mountain because I think the Space Mountain experience in Disneyland is very different than the the Space Mountain experience in Orlando because you're sitting like two to a seat. The track is different. Um, I don't, I wouldn't compare them because I don't think that's fair, but they are very different. Right. And this one is still equally as fun. So got to go on the top. Good. So when I look at these lists, I I mean, I think the Tomorrowland, well, I'm going to give away one of my things here early. I think Tomorrowland and Walt Disney World is vastly superior to the one in Disneyland. Yeah, I think that's fair. In its current form, um, because I'm looking at this list of attractions in Disneyland, and I'll be honest with you. You're going to be shocked at how I list mine, I'm sure. Number the from least enchanting to most enchanting for me at the bottom is going to be Star Tours. I do not like Star Tours. I get so motion sick on Star Tours. It is one of my least favorite attractions. I just I can't do it. It may, no matter how hard I try, it just it, it it just wrecks my system. So Star Tours is going to be at the bottom of the list for me. Um next up on the list probably Probably the Nemo subs. Ugh. I do like the concept. I think it's cute. Being in the sub doesn't really bother me. What bothers me is the smells that can <laughs> emanate inside the sub, you know, depending on how many dirty diapers have been in there recently. So uh, finding the subs be next on the list. Um, third from the bottom for me, I'm going to go with probably Astro Orbiter. Again, it, it's it's not on top. It's not the same as Astro Orders in Disney World because of its location. So it's going to reach there for me. Next on my list, probably Space Mountain. I'm not a huge Space Mountain fan. It's okay. But, you know, it is what it is. I I think Space Mountain and Disneyland. Well, we'll talk about the differences between the two in in a little bit. Um, 
Then I'm going to go Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters. It's not Space Ranger Spin. It's a slightly different version of the Buzz Lightyear shoot em game. I don't love it, but given the choices I have, that's where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put Autopia first. I think Autopia, there's a lot of nice views in Autopia. Yeah, for It sure. is an opening day attraction from Disneyland 1955. And I think it's uh, a better version of that than the one in Florida. I, I don't know. It's just something I leisurely stroll through Autopia. Yeah. So that would be my list from least to most enchanting in Disneyland. All right. Well, Disney World in Florida. Oh, wait, I think I can list them without looking at the list. Okay. Okay. Laugh Floor. Laugh Floor, yep. Yeah. Keep them Mover. Yep. Space Ranger Spin. Yep. Astro Blasters. Or not Astro, Astro Orbiter. Yep. I've done that twice now. Right. Space Mountain. Yes. Um, Carousel Progress. Yep. Two more. <laughs> hmm. What's left? Oh, Tomorrowland Speedway. That's one. Last one. Cosmic Rays. Nope. One more. We have not ridden it. We have not ridden it? Hmm. It just opened. Oh, Tron. Tron Light Cycle yeah. 1. Yeah. It, that's why it's not in my brain, because you haven't been on it. Yeah, yeah. So those are the eight attractions that currently, at the time of our recording, exist in Walt Disney World's Tomorrowland in Florida. Already off the... Already, like superior to california's right I think like so. we already have not only i think better attractions we have more of them there's automatically right. more to do so when we rank them from least to most enchanting we're, let's keep tron off the list because we haven't no, we haven't, been on, we haven't been on it yet so we're, we're gonna just assume tron is somewhere on the list obviously but we haven't ridden it yet so why don't you rank yours from least to most enchanting um okay buzz let your space ranger spin at the bottom, we had the worst experience on that ride, and I will never get over it. My mom and I don't even play the game. We just spin in circles, and it's really fun. Um, I think Laugh Floor, it was fun. I did enjoy it. I was just stressed out the whole time. I have so much public anxiety, you guys. Like, I would not be able to handle being called out like that in a room full of, like, a hundred other people. I couldn't do it. Um, okay, what's next? Um, Astro Orbiter next. It's nothing special on top of the building at night. It's very pretty. Um, but I was actually terrified last time we wrote it. Yeah, I, it's low key one of the scariest rides. I will probably never do it ever again. To be so honest with you, right. um, I think then you got to go Carousel Progress. Great big beautiful. No more, you know, twenty minutes, comfortable chair, AC, classic. Can't go wrong with it. Next, um, Space Mountain. I don't think I'm missing anything. Speedway. Speedway. Oh, yeah. Speedway, I guess, would fit. I forgot about the Speedway, so that should tell you where it would be on my list. Um, it's fun. I like it. I like just letting go of the wheel and having to go bounce back and forth on the track. Mm -hmm. And then Space Mountain. Fun. Love the queue. Love this ride. I only have positive memories on it. But at the top, people mover, best ride of all time. Yep. Boom. All right. My I list. I was really disjointed because I forgot about them and I can't read your handwriting. That's okay. So my list from least to most enchanting in Tomorrowland, I'm going to go with Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor at the bottom. Just like you, I have no desire to be called out and be a part of the show. So lots of anxiety for me there. So that'll be on the bottom of my list. The next one probably be Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Spin. Again, eh. It is what it is. So that's the next one up on my list. Then I'm going to go to Space Mountain. I'm just not a big Space Mountain fan. I mean, I'll ride it if I have to, I guess, but I'm just not a huge fan of Space Mountain. So Space Mountain will be on the list there. Then I'm going to put probably Astro Orbiter. I enjoyed Astro Orbiter, but it's not going to be at the top of my list. The next one up for me, Carousel of Progress. I enjoy the show. It's a great place to get air conditioning. Yeah. Um, Speedway will be next. I really, I don't know, something about riding the Speedway. I love it with your brother. It's relaxing with you too. So there's that. And then the last one, uh, or the top one on my list is also People Mover. It was really my most enchanting ride. And again, we didn't list Tron because, like I said, we have Haven't not had a chance to be on it yet. So. We, have only, we only have the input of others and it is not good. Right. So. Well, no, that's not true. I don't think I've heard all. too many positive things about Tron. Oh, well, 
I haven't seen too many negative things about Tron, except maybe it's too fast. Or I've th- heard it's not long enough of a ride. All I've heard is neutral things, and I think that's not what you want. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We'll have to judge for ourselves next time we go, if you know, if and when we go back. So, and when, well, I should say when. We definitely will at some point. Yeah, we definitely will go back. All right. So there we go. So we, we kind of hinted at this already. We've gone through the rides in each of the parks. I think we both said that we thought the Disney World version of Tomorrowland is the superior version mm-hmm. of Tomorrowland. I think most people would. I don't know. I don't know if most people would agree Comparing with that. Comparing them is, is weird because like Walt Disney World's just so much There's bigger. There's no cosmic rays in California. There's no cosmic rays in California. It's smaller. The theming is missing. You've got. The entire launch bay that's just empty, like not being used, like no, not yeah. there for me. All right. So, do you want to move on to some fun facts about Tomorrowland? You want to do some fun facts about Tomorrowland? Yes. All right, let's do some fun, fun facts about Tomorrowland. So, the opening day attraction in Florida. So, when Tomorrowland opened in 1971, did you know that there were only two attractions? In the entire Tomorrowland, it wasn't completed yet, and it had plenty of room for expansion. One was uh, the Speedway. The Speedway, the, or at the Autopia. time, it was called at, at the time it was. Well, we're talking about Florida, not in okay. California. It was called the Grand Prix Raceway, and the other was the Skyway to Fantasyland. The People Mover. No, no, no. It was like a, a, a like a ski lift, kind of like the Skyliner. But it was a much smaller version of that. And it was like a, a like a ski lift ride that took you from Fantasyland to tomorrow. And those were the only two attractions in Florida on opening day. Right. There you go. OK. Yeah. Um, another fun fact. Let's talk about Space Mountain. Um, Space Mountain exists in both California and in Florida. Mm-hmm. But there are some big differences between the two. In California, you sit side by side. Whereas in Florida, the ride vehicles are more like the Matterhorn, actually. It's yeah. you sit one behind the other. It's so, six people, two cars, three right. people each, and one behind the other. Absolutely. And, and, and they are horrible to get in and out of. It, That's okay. They're not hard, they're not easy to get in and out of. The track in California is actually shorter than it is in Florida. And there's only one track. In Florida, there are actually two tracks that ride simultaneously. So there's another fun fact. I did about, know that. About the uh, in California. So another fun fact. This is also in Florida. There is uh, kind of a very secret, awesome Mickey hidden there. So if you are by the Tomorrowland Speedway, there is a street light. And it has three round hooded lights on it. The light was designed so that during a certain part of the day, when the sun hits it just right, it creates a hidden mini effect, a hidden Mickey effect. Hidden mini. That's so cute. A hicken, hicken, not hicken. Hicken. A hidden. Minkin. Mickey. Hidden Mickey. Hidden Easy for me to say. All right. The um, Astro Orbiter goes around about 11 times per minute. Did you know that? There's a fun fact for you. That's crazy. Yeah. 11 times per minute. Did you know that the Speedway cars, <clears throat> the Speedway cars go about uh, seven and a half miles an hour? That's you know that? so funny. Yep. Seven and a half miles an hour. And they have like nine horsepower engines. <laughs> not very powerful. Nope. nope. They are not. Um, the oldest ride in Cal- in Florida's Tomorrowland is actually older than the land itself. The Carousel of Progress. Well, yeah. Because it came from the 1964 World's World's Fair. Fair. Yes. We have all heard that story. So there you go. There's another fun fact. You got Uh, one more? Do I have one more? Let me look up one more fun fact. I had a bunch of them written down. I can't seem to find them. So here you go. Um, In the queue for Star Tours at in California. Okay. An announcer calls for Mr. Egrog Sakul. Egrog Sakul. Sure. That is George Lucas spelled backwards. Hmm. That's very cool. George Lucas, the the (laughs) guy who Who did Star Wars. Yeah, Yeah. that's crazy. So there you go. Lots of fun facts about Tomorrowland, both in California and in Florida. So cool. I love Tomorrowland. I love Tomorrowland, too. All right. Anything else about Tomorrowland? Do we want to share with our guests this week? I love Tomorrowland. 
I love Tomorrowland too. Greatest land in the Magic Kingdom. So if, when ranking the lands, I know last week we tried to figure out where Adventureland fell in our rankings. Would you say Tomorrowland near the top? Yeah. Near the bottom I think it would be. Middle? I think Tomorrowland would be at the top for me. Really? I love Tomorrowland. It doesn't have my favorite attractions, but I love Tomorrowland. Yeah, I do too. I think it's probably ranks near the top for me yeah. too. Probably it's it's higher than Fantasyland, I think. Yeah, and we're going to have to talk about Fantasyland. Maybe... You, maybe I don't know, maybe we'll let our guests who are listening give us some feedback. Um, so maybe if they want to hear about us assemble Fantasyland next week, they can let us know and maybe we'll do Fantasyland next week. So guys, if Heck you have yeah. a preference on which land you want us to cover next, let us know. Email or yeah. direct messages. You guys great. can get in touch with us, disneyassembled at gmail.com, or you can send us a message on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all at Disney Assembled. But if you guys want to support the show further, the link to our T Public, Patreon, buy us a Dole Whip, all that other stuff is on our website, DisneyAssembled.com. Make sure to check it out. Yeah, do so. And if you haven't done so already, check out our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube.com, do a search for Disney Assembled. Join us there. Be a subscriber. Everyone's doing it. All oh, your yeah. friends, they should be. All your be. friends want to be so subscribers. Let them know. Yeah. Watch the YouTube. We appreciate that. All right, Mimi, high five. High five. Good job. Excellent episode. Um, yeah, two weeks in advance, but we're knocking them out. Heck yeah. Good deal. All right. This was lots of fun. Guys, we hope. This episode was fun for you. We hope it brought a smile to your face, too. A little extra magic to your day and that all-important pixie dust to your week. Thanks for listening again, guys. And until next time, see you real soon. gentlemen, please collect your belongings, watch your head and step, and take small children by the hand.